Saturday, February 24th on DAZN. You see it on the screen. The chosen one, Edgar Berlanga, takes on Patrick McCrory. They are both unbeaten super middleweights. Shootout. You see it on the screen. They are going to be in a shootout on February 24th on DAZN. That it promises to be a good one. We are here to talk about it. On Big Fight Preview, I'm George Jackvic alongside the champions, Pauli Malinaji, the champion, Chris Algieri. And we are talking about that fight and a com compelling undercard fight. Right now, we have got the chosen one, the, the unbeaten Edgar Berlanga, interviewing with us. Thank you, Edgar. I know you got a lot going on. You got the press conference. So thank That's you for cool. taking some time. So I just want to jump right into it. You're fighting an unbeaten Pedreg McCrory. Now, there was an article that came out, and um, and you quoted as saying that that he's not dangerous enough to pose a threat to you. Some people might think you're taking him lightly. Um, tell tell me what your thoughts are on him as an opponent. No, I never said. I, uh, what I said was I said that um, that I see that he has a good right hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, to be honest, I don't think any fighter could pose a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? As long as I'm I'm on, as long as I'm 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 dialed in. I'm, I'm locked in, you know, uh, I'm the one that they should be worried about. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not overlooking him. I never um, overlook any opponent. Um, you know, this is boxing, you know, anything can happen. I understand. I know that I've seen it happen plenty of times where the fighter that I was supposed to win loses, you know, so I won't make that happen. You know, this week, Saturday, you know what I'm saying? As a repeat, you know what I'm saying? I'm a superstar. I'm, I'm focusing on this fight very hard. I train very hard, um, and I'm excited. Polly. Yeah, Edgar, you know, uh, you sound, you know, it, you sound like it's fight week. You know what I mean? You sound like mm -hmm. you're, you're honed in and, and, and dialed yeah. in there. Um, I'll, say, I'll say this, you know, uh, you're at the point in your career where it's not just winning. It's you're in such a stacked weight class with so much talent there, and you are oh. one of the when you are one of the big names that people talk about in that weight class. So you're in that conversation when it comes to the talent mm -hmm. of the 168 pound division. Uh, knowing that it brings it's both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it's great to be talked about in a positive light. It's great to be talked about among the elite in a, in, a, in an elite weight class in a weight class that's fun yes. and people look forward to. But at the same time, it's also a curse because just winning isn't always enough to separate yourself from the pack because there's so many good fighters there. There's also uh, that pressure to win in a certain fashion, to win in a certain impressive yeah. way. How was camp and, 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 and in what fashion, basically what I'm saying is where is your mindset here on fight week? I know a lot of it depends on how camp was, but how, what, where is that mindset as far as keeping all of these things into, into, into consideration going into this fight? Um, right now, I feel like, right now, I feel like, um, I'm in like, like a high right now, you know, of happiness. You know what I'm saying? Um, this camp was amazing, man. Uh, you know, first and foremost, we didn't have no injuries. Thank the Lord. Um, you know, a lot of my camps, I'm always, I'm always going through a lot of injuries. I'm always going through sickness, you know, from dropping weight or not, you know, having my immune system high up, you know, catching the flu. Like, it's just crazy. And this camp, for the first time ever, thank the Lord. You know, I was healthy and I got great sparring. You know, I was sparring one of the guys that's with Pro Box TV, you know, Najee Lopez, uh Darrell Val Saint was one two, you know, one of the spawn one of the spawn partners as well. Patrick Gora, you know, he's undefeated, another prospect. So I had all prospects sparring this this whole camp, you know, younger guys than me pushing me each and every day in the gym. Yeah, Edgar, Chris Algeria here, man. What, what what's up? Um so, Paulie had mentioned blessing and a curse, and I feel like your first 16 fights was a bit of a blessing and a curse. One, it got a lot of eyes on you, right? But I keep saying this, this remarkable quote. Your 17th, pro fight, your 17th pro fight was your 17th professional round. So, uh, you didn't get to go build all that experience. Normally, guys get that experience in those first 16 fights. You were dropped into world-class guys right after that. And there's been a lot of criticism yeah. about that, you know, he's gone the distance his last five fights after starting 16 straight uh, first round knockouts, uh, which is an oh. incredible stat. But you learned a lot in those fights. Speak a little bit to where your mind is at now that you have the experience that you have with those tough guys, the Coceres and, um, and, and, and Quigleys of the world, where you had to dig deep and figure things out. How, how does that help you mentally? Um, you're right about that, um, you know, me and Mark, we came to a realization. Well, Mark already did, but he made me understand and realize, like, my first 16 fights, 
you know, a lot of, like what you said, a lot of fighters, young fighters got experience. You know, they went through a lot of them. I say like 90% of fighters, their first 16 fight, you know, sometimes, you know, especially in this generation that, they, that, that they're going, that they're going so fast, you know, they experience a lot and they go through a lot. You know what I mean? My first 16 fights, I was just boom, 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 chopping these guys down. You know, um, so I didn't really get to have any experience of going into the second round or knowing what it's like to get it to take a good shot, come back. You know, it was a lot of different things, you know, and I'm excited, man. I'm happy that I'm that I'm actually going through this, you know, and, you know, what Quigley was like, you know, I dropped him four times. He came in tremendous shape. You know, he didn't want to get knocked out. He was trying to be in there to pull a point as well, even though he ran half of the time of the, of the fight. But um, I think, you know, it's a blessing. Uh, you know, I went 12 rounds my last fight. Um, I'm fighting an undefeated guy now, uh, and I'm ready, man. Like, I feel I feel amazing right now. You know, I'm four pounds away from my weight, you know, so I'm like, I'm on. You know, I'm not, like, usually Thursdays, I'm, you know, the day before the win, I'm usually 10, 12 pounds over. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, we saw the interview Edgar, from you, you last week, and I actually I looked at Paul and I go, look at his face. This guy's in shape. So that, yes. that, that's, 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 that's another aspect of, of something that you learn as, as you go on. You always got to be ready. So that, that, that's good to hear. We say, we, yeah. you know, Edgar, you said you don't take anybody lightly. You, had, you opened up the interview like that. But where do you see McCrory in, in the grand scheme of things, in 168-pound division? Uh, what, what, how, what kind of opponent do you view him as? And, and obviously the goal is to win. But what, what kind of performance on Saturday puts you into the conversation for the Canelos and the Munguias of the world where – where you know, um, guys that guys that, guys man, guys that your name has been surrounded with. Yeah. Um. I already that that's one thing that's on my mind is not only you know just beating him, but it's how I beat him that's like running through my mind, you know, and and that's why I'm so locked in and so focused here. You know, it's not all about the physical; it's about the mental. You know, it's about the IQ; it's about you know going in there and breaking him down mentally. And that's my goal for this weekend. You know, and for Patrick, I think he's up there. You know, he's he's ranked in the sanctioning bodies. You know, not a lot of people know him, but, um, you know, he is a threat. Any fight is a threat at 168 right now. And anybody could punch at 168. You know, you put on those on gloves, the lightest punch at 168 could knock somebody out. You know, so I understand that. I know that. We know that. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm coming in different in this fight. You know, I really want to show and prove. I want to put the 168 division on notice. I want Canelo. I want Mungi. I want these type of guys to understand that I'm here. Edgar, my, my last question to you, because I know you got to go, but you talked about your mindset and being locked in. Um, for a lot of people that might not know, Mark Ferre was your was your coach earlier in the career. You guys were apart for a little bit, and you're back together. Tell me the importance of him, not only in your corner, but in your life going into this fight. Mental. And I always say that, you know, he always, when, when I first started with Mark, he always worked on my mental before anything. He worked on my mental, he worked on my feet, you know, in boxing, and, you know, and, Anybody that knows boxing you know, understands that, you know, boxing is your feet before anything. You know, your feet gets you there in position to land and gets you out of position. You know, well, it gets you out of, out of, out of uh, you know, out of danger. So, um, you know, with Mark, you know, we just been, he, we just been dialed in here. You know, everything is about the will. Everything is about your mental, you know, and, and how much you willing and how far you willing to go. Um, and then everything else comes, you know, I'm, I'm a fighter. I know how to, I know how to punch. I know how to knock people. I know how to, I know how to hurt people. You know, but for, for me, it's, um, it's all about this. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at the greats, the greats always had this. You know, Floyd Mayweather, Canelo, Terrence Crawford, Muhammad Ali. Like, these guys, Andre Ward, like, these guys was, like, super duper duper here. Everything was here. You know, and once you don't let this beat you, the sky's the limit. And Edgar, that's a great... Paulie, Chris, you have anything for yeah, Edgar? Yeah, I want to just add on. I want to jump on that as well, uh, uh, Edgar. That, that's really... Uh, when you look at your career especially, that, that falls into play very, very nicely because you were getting all first-round knockouts. So there's a psychology to all of a sudden having guys that are resisting and, and f trying to fight you back when they're not... Not only are they not getting knocked out in the first round, but now they're, they're trying to fight you back. There's a different psychology to that kind of fight. And I feel like you had to kind of get used to that because you almost got so... You got so used to knocking everybody out in the first round... The, 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 it was it sort of threw you off psychologically more than anything else. These guys starting to hang in there and fight you back, and you know what? That's the thing about opponents that they get better. They yeah. they don't they don't quite want to cooperate with with you just winning. So there's a psychology yeah. to, to navigating that fight, and so that's a great point uh, about uh, Mark really stressing that because I think he realized that as well. Yeah, and, and like for me, right? Like when when Mark never told me, "Yo, you got to knock this guy on the first round." It always happened naturally, you know. And Mark never got the finish with me. You know, as a fighter, you know, he, he was building me from, from, from the bottom up. And when we split, you know, for certain reasons, um, 
you know, when we split, it was like his job was unfinished, you know. So I went to another trainer unfinished, and then that trainer just hopped in and just was like, just let's keep it going. But Mark had a game plan. Mark had, had he had structure he wanted to build with me, you know. And when I left, it was like that's where, or where, where, where it all ended. And then last year, when I got to him, like, in camp right before the Prigley fight, I was like overweight, you know what I'm saying? I was just coming back. I was going through a slight depression, you know, with the whole, you know, I didn't want to fight no more because I was like, damn, I don't think I could go back with Mark. You know, we could train with Mark for certain reasons. So I was like, damn, bro, like, I was like, bro, I don't even want to go. I don't I don't want to go to all the trainer, man. Like, I told my dad, I said, yo, pops, if I can't go with all the trainer, I'm, I'm about to, I'm going to quit this, right? Chris, Chris, you have anything left uh, really quick before Edgar gets out of here? No, I know how fight weeks are, champ. I don't want to take any yeah. more of your time, man. Yeah, go do your thing. You this is very, I got, I do a, very eye-opening, so go do your thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, champ. All right. So, uh, Paulie, Edgar seems like he's locked in. Do you, do you like what you heard? I mean, it's it's your fight week game face, right? I mean, uh, a lot of times fighters, you talk to them, they're that's sort of how they have, that demeanor they have. You have the sort of that mean streak kind of coming about you, but also focused. Uh, there's a relief that camp is over and you you're just dying to get out there and perform. I get the feeling that you know Belanga has is much more enthusiastic about his boxing than he than he had been in in more recent times. You know, uh, I think the Quigley fight got him uh, more enthusiastic. I think he's enthusiastic about this fight as well. I think he's. I don't want to say he was out of love with boxing, although that's how he, he was sort of making it sound like it in the interview at times, uh, that he had fallen in love, out of love with it. But, but I feel like at this point, you know, there's, there's new goals, new motivations. Uh, it's always nice when you can hear your name being mentioned among the elite of your weight class and on the championship level. It gives you that motivation every day when you're training in the gym and, and you're in camp. It's, uh, it, 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 I feel like he's got that chip on his shoulder and he's ready to perform on, on Saturday. Yeah, George, I... Uh, I, I took two things away from the interview. One, he, you know, he spoke a lot about psychology, and I think that was really important for him. And I think these last five fights where not only has he been going the distance and fighting tougher opposition and having to overcome certain things, uh, but he had a lot of a, a criticism to overcome as well. And, you know, Champ, you spoke to him, you know, in terms of losing some love for the sport. And it seems like that's back. He's excited to be training. And then number two, what I took from that is he looks like he's in shape. And I've seen him before weigh-ins where he looked in, it looked in a bad way. Eyes sunk it in, really, really sucked in face. He didn't look that way. Um, he looked focused. He looked determined. He didn't look like he's cutting weight, but it doesn't t the, the weigh-in is tomorrow. Um, but he did look to be fitter than I've seen him in the past, and that, that's a good sign. When you've got a fighter who is physically in shape and mentally in shape and is speaking the way that he was speaking, uh, it makes me that much more excited for, for Saturday night when, uh, for the comeback of the chosen one. All right. Well, we heard from Edgar Berlanga. His opponent is an unbeaten Irishman. Let's hear what Patrick McCrory had to say to us. Yeah, so it was due to be made in June, but then they gave it to Jason Quigley instead. So Matrim created um, a bond with, with my managing company, which is Jimmy Conlon and Michael Conlon. Um, and they were able to like to make the fight. Yeah, like if you look at the names that people are talking about, if I beat Berlanga, it puts me in line to fight McGee or, or Pachaco or even Carnalo. Um, that's the name that that Berlang is talking about. So if I beat him, I'm next in line. Yeah, I'm I'm a proud Irish man. Um, and he he beat the last Irish man, so it's now up to me that uh, try and get for the revenge for the nation. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a very good fighter. I think he has a very good job, and but his main attribute is his power. Um, I think it's like it's fairly obvious. I think if you let like Berlang impose his style. It can be a difficult night, so we have a game plan. Um, we've worked on many things, and, and I think I think we're ready like for this fight and for the opportunity. I thought it was going to be the underdog. Um, he's he's the A side. It, it, it's in the USA. Um, it's what I expected. So it it's like it's nothing new. When when Irish men usually fight on on like big cars, I guess they're usually like the underdog. So I expected that. Um, I'm not concerned with that, but I'm ready to to beat the bookie. Usually, I'm a, like a, like an aggressive fighter, and if I can implement that, uh, I think we're going to be in for for a very good fight. But but as I say, I'm ready for 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 different scenarios. Um, I believe my nine knockouts doesn't reflect like the part that I have. Um, and don't be surprised if you see me. 
Matt Berlanger. Just catch me on Ori McCrory at Instagram. That's my main handle. Um, but yes, thanks for having me on, and it's been great. All right, guys. Well, you, you see the matchup right there. Both unbeaten fighters. Uh, obviously, Berlanga is the younger fighter. McCrory, 35 years old, uh, can really, really make his career with the win. So let's talk predictions for this one. Pauly, uh, is Edgar going to break that that uh, decision streak, not getting knockouts? How, how's it going to go? I mean, I, I, again, I don't really look at it in that perspective. I look at it, you know, from how complete is he becoming as a fighter? You know, you, you saw some improvements in the Quigley fight. This is the, the, these are the kind of things that you're going to be looking for in this fight as well against McCrory, whether he gets the stoppage or not. Obviously, a stoppage is always, you know, that much more promotable. A stoppage is, gives you that much more momentum. But at the same time, you know, the power wasn't really what people were worried about with, with Berlanga. The, 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 what people were worried about with Berlanga was what would happen when people would, would resist that power, you know, and then where he was showing a little bit of susceptibility. So I feel like he's been cleaning that up. The Quigley fight shows some of the methods he's been cleaning that up. If McCrory goes, I think it's terrific for Berlanga's career. But if he doesn't go, you're going to continue to look for the polishing of, of, of Berlanga's style, boxing style, inside that ring and make sure that, you know, he's showing the things necessary to be able to take on a higher level of opposition. And for McCrory, of course, you know, this is uh, the biggest fight of his career. You know, at 30, come, for it to come at 35 years old, he's been undefeated, he's performed, he's done well. Uh, this would absolutely make all the work he's put in all these years uh, worthwhile, you know, because he would be able to catapult himself right into a bigger fight right away. Because at 35 years old, whoever's handling him, if he's able to get a win, they're not going to be waiting around. They're going to be looking to make the next biggest uh, possible situation for him. So uh, ha knowing those, the motivation both guys have, have coming into the fight, it, it excites you. Neither guy is a defensive whiz but they're not terrible defensively so you you would expect action going both ways uh but i think uh i think i, I got a feeling belanga may get the stoppage here in, in about seven or eight you know in a fight where pro drag pro it can be dangerous at times you know he's got a good right hand he's shown that it can be uh it's a dangerous right hand he's shown that it can hurt guys with it and uh like i said belanga is hittable a little bit in his own right so uh there's things to look for in this fight i'm excited to watch it chris yeah, I um when, I, when this fight was first announced, I was like, who who is who is Pedrag McCrory? Uh, and which is another Irishman in the way. You know, this is his second Irishman in, in, in a row for Berlanga. He fought Quigley last fight, um, and Quigley was well more well known. But upon looking into uh, McCrory's record a little bit and watching some video on him and his style and looking at his last couple of fights, I don't hate this fight at all. Uh, McCrory does have a good right hand, and really what I like about him, he's very confident. He believes in himself. He believes in his power. Um, he believes in his ability. Uh, and he believes in his chances to win this fight. And for him, at 35 years old, this really is a last stand. And he's got a big opportunity in front of him. Like the champ said, a win here is going to skyrocket him um, in, into potential really, really big fights and good money, life-changing type fights. Um, but I do believe that with that confidence and his, his get to it in this, I think it's going to leave a lot of opportunities for Berlanga, who has the power advantage and has very underrated boxing skills, which I've said many times before, in the past, plus what he's learned in the last couple fights, going the distance, going those rounds. Um, I think that we may see, we, we're possibly going to see a knockout here. I, I think we are. Uh, but I do think it's going to be an entertaining fight. I think while it lasts, it's a shootout. I think Pedraga is going to come out throwing those right hands. There's going to be opportunities for him early. Um, and we're going to see Berlanga have to, have to dig deep once again, figure things out. Um, but I do believe he's going to come through on top. He finished very strong in the Quigley fight. I think Quigley had a very smart game plan. When he fought Berlanga last time out, I was there that night. He looked great. Um, wasn't enough, though. Not enough firepower. And Berlanga was able to wear him down and show it actually late power and good conditioning in that fight. So I believe the things that Berlanga learned in the Quigley fight are really going to help him in this fight against McCrory. But listen, I think it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a shootout while it lasts. Yeah, McCrory's an underdog, but uh, that's why they fight the fights. That's why they fight the fights. And he's also promising to avenge Quigley's lost one Irishman to another. <laughs> Guys, let's talk about the under, uh, undercard. Uh, it's a guy that you know very well. Our our guy, Pablo Cesar Cano. He's fighting Shakram Giazov. Giazov is an unbeaten welterweight. Uh, guys, let, let's be serious here. Cano's uh, getting this shot because of that sensational fight he had on Pro Box last October where he knocked out Zachary Ochoa. Paulie, that, that fight has catapulted him into this position. 
Well, this is exactly why we do what we do at Pro Box TV. You know, uh, we, we love to make those kind of fights, those exciting fights, those evenly matched fights. And of course, we show this shows this is one example of several examples that I've seen now on Pro Box TV where a win here is a big win on on, that, on the network because you're we're not you're not getting fed cupcakes when you come fight on Pro Box TV. You got to take on real opponents, real fighters. So if you're able to win, especially if you're able to win in impressive fashion or make a statement, you know what? You get the opportunities against in bigger fights on the bigger networks, on the championship level, and so on and so forth. With. Pablo Cano has been a veteran at this point. You know, he's been in uh, the ring my, with myself and, and several other top-level fighters. Uh, sort of been an enigma because you, you see the potential that Cano has shown, but he's always been a bit undisciplined, both in making weight uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, a bit of laziness outside the ring. But when he puts it together, Cano has shown himself to be very capable. And there's been performances in his career that have sh sort of shown you that. The Ochoa fight was kind of a... Last chance kind of fight, you know. Him and Ochoa have had a decent had had a decent career of kind of fringe contenders, but it was sort of uh, who was going to get left behind and who was going to move on to maybe one last big shot. And Cano got that big knockout. He not only did he win, it was an, it was a super exciting fight. It was a pro box TV type of special fight, you know, but back and forth um, momentum switches and whatnot. Cano has an exciting style, you know. He's he's hittable. He's very technically sound, but he's hittable. You know, he likes to fight in that Mexican range, which is like at close range where you can kind of there's contact there. But he's a good body puncher. Uh, he sets up his combinations well. He hides them well. Uh, like I said, he's, he's a, he'll bang with you, but he's technically very well, and, I, and I, fi I find him to be very exciting. And trust me, I fought him. I can punch, too. So it's a... Uh, uh it's uh, an interesting fight. Giasov, obviously, being the gold medalist, uh, he's a guy who people are pointing to. He's going to be the favorite, and then the odds are kind of heavy in his favor. But don't forget, Cano was also a heavy, heavy underdog against Jorge Linares, and he got a first-round knockout out of it. You know, again, Cano can punch a bit, and Giasov, as good as he is, uh, so he's a silver medalist in the Olympics, a world uh, gold medalist uh, at the World Championships in the Amateurs. But nonetheless, at, as good as he is, he's defensively a bit flawed himself. And like I said... Kano's offense is not just a banger's offense. He likes to bang, but he puts together nice combinations and hides the shots well, goes to the body, goes to the head. Uh, I really think this fight could be a Castillo show there. I, I, I think it's a good fight uh, regardless. You've probably favored Giasov a little bit, but you don't count Kano out, bro. Kano, if it, it, when Kano shows up right, he's dangerous against anybody. Yeah, and we're going to see yeah, more, more of this from fighters that are fighting on our air and then get big shots immediately afterwards on, on some of these championship networks and get, even getting championship fights. Um, and this is just par for the course, what, what the plan for Pro Box TV is all about. But yeah, and with Counter, you can't count him out. And I've called Giasovs a couple of his fights, actually called his, his, his last fight, actually. Um, and he's one of the guys that is highly tatted as he was in the amateurs. In the pros so far, just really hasn't panned out. And if he has an off night, Counter's the kind of guy that can upset you. And he can make a lot of people some money because the, uh, the, the, the lines are quite, quite wide, as you can see down at the bottom of the screen. Um, this is, this is going to be an interesting fight. And Giasov, he's got a good knockout percentage, 9 KOs in his 15 wins, but I don't think that power is, is true at the highest level. And Kano's one of those guys who's been in with top, top-level guys. Um, I, I think this fight is going to go rounds, if not the distance. Kano's going to be there every step of the way. Uh, what worries me about Kano is that this fight's actually at welterweight. And Kano, in his last fight, fought... Uh, on our air, closer to 140, and I think he's probably better fit in there. Um, Giasov is, is, is a bigger fighter, bigger man at, at the welterweight division, even if he doesn't have uh, that heavy one-punch power. But Kano, man, like you said, champ, when that guy shows up, when he's, when he's dialed in and on, which is how he seemed when he fought on our air, he knew it was his last chance and the win there was going to get him a big opportunity. Well, the big opportunity is here. And if he shows up the way that we know that he can with the experience and the skill set he has, we have we could have a real fight in our hands and a potential upset. Well, Paulie, let, let's let's talk uh, let's talk predictions. And he is a huge, a huge underdog in this fight. He's a plus one thousand underdog in this fight. Paulie, you said it was the same odds he had against Jorge Linares, and he won that fight. But predictions for this fight, Paulie? I can remember you know, look at me and my best friend uh, uh, like two degenerates because I had a degenerate phase in my life, you know? <laughs> and I can remember when the, the Linares fight got made and it was, we found out he was fighting Linares like that night, that day of the fight. We were looking for websites everywhere that would take the action. Nobody was taking <laughs> the action. He was a, he was a, a the, the odds were crazy, but nobody, there was nowhere you could find with the action because everybody thought Linares was such a lock to win the fight. Meantime, me and my best friend were looking for somewhere we could put, put the bet in so uh, to, that we could bet on Kano, uh, as it turned out, we didn't find anywhere, and uh, Kano got that first round knockout. I'm not telling you for sure everything happens that way again here, but I, all I'm saying is as an example that Kano, when he shows up right, he can be very, very dangerous. Uh, you know what? You got sportsbetting.ag that does have the odds, so you can find that if you want a, a, a live underdog. Keep in mind, this is still an underdog, and it's still plus a thousand, but I'll tell you what, man. 
for a plus 1,000 on the dog, he's very, very, very capable. And, and, and Giasov is, again, like even the champ mentioned, uh, Chris Algieri, you know, he hasn't shown himself to be that kind of blue chip type of prospect that a silver medalist usually is from the Olympics. He's, he's a bit hittable. He's a bit wide with his punches at times. Sometimes he ends up trading a bit and banging a bit too much, and that can be dangerous against a guy like Kano who can both punch, get to your body very well, and, um, you know, put combinations together very well in a deceptive fashion. He hides his punches well. He, he's, he's very creative with his shot selection. Your favorite, gear yourself. But if you want a live underdog, you know what, bro? Kano ain't, 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 ain't a bad pick. Uh, the only thing with Kano is he does cut easily as well, and that's what you got to be careful with as well. One thing, that, one the other thing to keep in mind. Yeah, I actually fought on that card when Kano knocked out Lenares, and there was a lot of talk yeah. and a lot of a lot of pressure that we were going to have a Lenares Algeri yeah. matchup with, with both of us. Nobody winning was there. talking about Kano. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> I I actually got the I fought with the flu that night. Had a pretty, I had a flat performance. Not as flat as Lenars, who literally <laughs> ended up flat in the fight. <laughs> but but that, that ruined our, our, our future date together. Uh, but again, they, even you said nobody really cared about Kano, even at that point. You know, but, uh, but now he's here again. Now, I mentioned that, yeah, he, he, he potentially could get the upset. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Giasov goes out there and does what he does. Uh, Giasov has, has shown a good gas tank. He has some good boxing skills on the outside. I think he'll be able to evade Kano, especially early on. Um, and end up probably winning a decision. I do think it goes to distance. Um, but Giasov does has shown some power at times. Um, didn't show it in his last fight too much. Was not really setting up his punches. Um, but he does have the skill set from that, that vast amateur background. Uh, I do think there's going to be spots in this fight where this is going to be somewhat entertaining. But I think Giasov is going to do what he needs to do to, to, to use his boxing skills and his size, physical size, to get out there. And you mentioned a good point about the cut. Yeah. He was cut pretty yeah. bad in the Ochoa fight. Yeah, because yeah. he's because he's he's cut bad against me as well. He's got a good chin. It's as if yeah. he's, but he's stoppable because unfortunately he cuts very easily and he and he gets bad cuts. Yeah. Well, and as you get older, those, those 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 scar tissue that scar yeah. tissue cuts way easier. Uh, especially when you've had it since you're young. I mean, yeah. when I fought him, he was like 22. That's oh, right. Yeah, he's been yeah. forever. Yeah. That's crazy to think that you you fought him and he's still fighting and he's in a co-main event. So so it's exciting. It's going down February 24th. You can see that fight. And the headliner, Edgar Berlanga, the chosen one, takes on Patrick McCrary. That's going down on the zone February 24th. You heard from the champs. They've made their picks. They've broken down the fights. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.